What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of me finding random things on YouTube. This video popped up in my recommended list and it is called Man Goes Crazy Rips Off Shirt During Street Interview. And how could you not click on that title? Actually, it would be pretty easy. And it's a pretty old video, but it's the first time I've ever seen it and I couldn't just let it slide by and not talk about it. With that being said, let's just walk up to the edge of the pool and dive right in. What's your name? My name? Oh, let me tell you my name. Uh, I'm confused. That name must run in his family. I have a feeling that after this interview, we're all going to be really, really confused. Like we're supposed to believe in the ministry, right? The ministry? Is he talking about like the Ministry of Magic from Harry Potter? So is the, is, is the church and state supposed to be separate? I'm confused because I never went to school. So we're only 23 seconds into this and I'm already completely lost. Started off with talking about the ministry to he never went to school and he's confused and so am I. Right? Is a confused person get a resolution? I don't think this guy understood the question, what's your name? Because none of these are the answer to that question. You see, when you go like that, right, you have a cross, two sticks, right? A cross or a T. I mean, it's kind of debatable, I guess. And that's how I felt when I was in Waterloo. Because when I walked in Waterloo and smiled at people, they treated me like a vampire. They used the cross and they went like this by not smiling at me. So by not smiling at him, they treated him like a vampire. And by not smiling at him, it was the equivalent of holding a cross up to him. Can you imagine living a life like that? Like taking something so personal to where if somebody doesn't smile at you, that means they basically almost want to kill you from how personal this guy has taken it. It'd be such a horrible life to take something like that so personal. Especially since I don't smile at anybody when I'm walking down the street. I really hope that people don't think that I hate them. In Toronto, hey, hi guys, you know me, Steve Spiros, easy going. So we finally got our answer. His name is Steve. We're finally getting somewhere. I don't think the people that actually know Steve would place his name and easygoing in the same sentence though, unless if there's a not in between the two. Damn it, I didn't smile at easygoing Steve again. Now he's telling all my friends I want to drive a stake through his heart. Those who know me, I'm a nobody. You understand? And you can't kill a person with no body. I mean, he's kind of right. You can't really kill a person with no body, no, with nobody, no, no, no body, I guess. That statement is actually kind of poetic if you think about it. He's a nobody and you can't kill somebody with no body. Steve's on some like next level enlightenment here. He's clearly woke. So why am I afraid? I'm not afraid. I'm afraid of the boogeyman. Who's the boogeyman? You figure it out. Make up your mind, Steve. You're afraid. You're not afraid. Wait, hold on. You're afraid of the boogeyman. But who's that? Oh, that's my bird in the bear now to try and figure out who the boogeyman is? I'm getting out of here. I'm going back to Waterloo where the vampires hang out. And I'm going to wear my sunglasses that night. You know why? Because women show their tits, have short skirts, and then they feel violated when I look at them. Why? Because I have sunglasses on and I'm weird. So now the truth comes out. Steve is walking down the street, makes it seem like he's smiling at people, and they don't smile back, so that makes him a vampire. But come to find out, he's walking down the street, staring at girls' boobs and their legs, because they're dressed revealing, apparently. But now he's found the solution. Just wear sunglasses. <laughs> girls can't think you're a creep if they don't know that you're looking at them. It's the oldest trick in the book. It's probably the most off-the-wall interview I've ever seen and I have to give props to this girl for keeping it together the entire time she cracks smiles but not once does she ever laugh or even say anything throughout this entire rant but all those people who called me a sleepwalker I woke up now I'm going back to sleep but you want to go back to sleep Steve you've already reached next level enlightenment once your mind has been opened you can't just unknow everything it's in there forever you're always going to be woke because I'm going to be committed in an isolation room because I'm going to go back to the ministry and allow them to perceive me as I am a fuck up. You know, Steve, out of all these different places you go to from Waterloo to the ministry, you just, they don't, you don't really seem like you have a good time. Why don't you, I don't know. You just stay home. 
Look at, look at this square. It was a shithole when I worked here. Now it looks like New York Manhattan. Where are the bums? There's no bums here. Toronto doesn't have bums. But Waterloo, they're creating bums. They created me. Why? I don't know. It's actually a little known fact is that Waterloo actually has a bum factory where they actually manufacture bums for towns. Maybe it's the church. Talk to the Pope. He knows everything. It's also true that the Pope does know everything, including why Waterloo created the bum Steve. I'm gonna die. How can you die when you're dead? Holy shit. How do you die when you're dead? Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna be crucified, right? There's the shirt ripping we were promised. In our interviewer there, she looks pretty impressed to say the least. I'm not gonna raise my voice. Oh, thank God. I was really scared you were just gonna yell at me the whole time, Steve. Oh, wait. And that's the end of the video. I mean, yeah. I kind of grazed YouTube a little bit to see if I could find more of the video, but I feel like this is enough. I think it's pretty safe to say that Steve probably isn't all there, right? But what I think is that he's actually talking in some kind of weird code. Like everything was really poetic and like the things he said made sense. They just didn't make sense. But I feel like if you're able to crack the code, what it all comes down to is just a really stressed man who had a really bad day at work and he's just really glad it's Friday. He could finally take his shirt off. If you feel like you cracked the code and you feel like you know what Steve is talking about, go ahead and leave a comment below letting the rest of us know. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I was